All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. We thank God for everybody that is listening to this broadcast on this last Sunday of August. Can you believe it's so fast has passed us by? I mean, August is just zoom through here. And uh, we're right on the door of September. And, uh, you know, kicking off going into the harvest seasons, September, October, November. It's exciting times. So we're really uh, thrilled about it and excited about it. And God's up to it. And uh, he's bringing us to it and through it and all around uh, in every way to the blessing. So we thank God for it. How to thank God for you as well that are tuning in to either Facebook Live or YouTube or your, or LinkedIn, any of those Twitter, any of those social networks that we're on. Uh, we're glad to make your acquaintance if we don't, have never met before. God bless you. And those that we do know and love, appreciate you as well. Hallelujah. And uh, thank God for this interaction. Amen. Spiritual revival. Glory to God. And God revival. So the Lord really put some things on my mind and heart. You know, a lot of people uh, are, you know, up in age. You know, when I say up in age, in other words, over, over 60, 60 and over. And uh, baby boomer, baby, 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 baby boomer generation, so, so to speak. And, you know, they've seen a lot in America over the years and how things have progressed and how things have degenerated. And there's positives and minuses to everything, even like the Internet, for example. The Internet is exploding with positive things. And on the other hand, um, the Internet is airing out all the dirty laundry of the dirty morality and the uh, ugly things that people usually have lived in private. Now it's all for everybody to see. And a lot of times that downplays the good that is actually happening. And there's a lot of powerful, positive things taking place. And I don't let all of that cloudiness of the world's disposition and attitude, uh, rebellion and obstinacy and, and outright uh, demonic control uh, try to usurp my consciousness, my awareness, because I've had a good collective awareness all the way through the years uh, of how great America has been. And, and how great, uh, some great phenomenal things have taken place over the years. And, and uh, you know, we're in gear. I've been, I've been uh, saved since uh, 1977. So I've seen a lot of God and a lot of good and a lot of glory and a lot of heaven, a lot of, of, of spirit life. And so my consciousness of my mindset is kingdom collective, kingdom collective. Thank God for kingdom collectiveness. Glory to God. And, and having that kind of mindset and having that kind of growth and maturity, it's all just very nice. And coming into an even greater uh, accumulation and graduation into the wonderful things that heaven has. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I like Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, then the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. Then the wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Like the stars forever and ever. Wow, that is quite amazing, isn't it? That he actually calls the righteous like stars. Talk about real stars in real places in God's eyesight. We are the stars. The righteous are really, truly the stars. Right. Amen. That lead many to righteousness. Yeah. And so in the brightness, called the brightness of the wise. The brightness of the wise. So things are bright. Things are in delight. Uh, God gives so much insight and uh, shows us what is right and gives us a terrific class of clarity and reality beyond anything we've ever known or comprehended. Hallelujah. Beyond our own comprehension and our mental uh, ability to see goes way beyond that. It is crisp, clear, and God manifestation. Glory to God. 
And I'll explain how that happens. You know, that happens because God has made provision for us through his son, Jesus Christ, who is a, he is the bright and morning star. He is the bright and morning star. Gets up every morning with us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in 1 Peter 2.24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his stripes you are healed. 2 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you are healed. So what he did on the tree gave us the ultimate victory. Hallelujah, that, that, that we have actually died to sin, yes. died to the consequence yes. of sin, yes. died to the negations of sin. And, and now we are living unto righteousness or God's rightness, his uprightness, his moral soundness, his moral perfect character and integrity. Uh, God moves in that level and on that realm and we thank God for it. Thank you, Lord. Um, it's so lovely, is it, when you go back and look at the rudiments of how we actually uh, live in this life, even though we're also registered as citizens of heaven. Yeah. We're living in this life now, and uh, God has made preparation for us and reparation for us yeah. to move through life seamlessly with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! And the angels of heaven. We are surrounded by angels from heaven. Glory to God. And I thank God for it. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't live in that level. They don't live in that realm. They don't live in that notion. They don't have that commotion. They don't have that bestirment. They don't have that reality unfolding because they're not yet born again. When you're born again, you enter the kingdom of God. And when you enter the kingdom of God, you enter the eternal realm of God's operation. The eternal realm of God's operation and doing far greater than the limited world in which we live in. Far are surpassing anything that we've ever known in the natural. When you enter in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God works inside of you. My, my, my. You know, Romans 5.19. For just as through the disobedience of one man... The many were made sinners just by the disobedience of one man. The many were made sinners. What, we were made sinners out of one man? Yes. Actually, when Adam fell, he, he made sinners out of everyone. He, he Because he was the first fruits. He was the prototype. He was created to live eternally. But because of his disobedience... In the aid of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he fell morally away from God and he was alienated from the life of God and that passed upon all generations in sequence from Adam. So look at the power of Adam. But it says, so also though the obedience of one man, so also through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous. The many will be made righteous. Glory to God. That's a right standing with God. I mean, we've got our head screwed on straight. 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 We know and we walk in the life of God. We walk in God as though we have never, ever sinned. Because Jesus is the sin remedy. He came and removed the sin quotient. He came and removed the power of sin. And let us enter into God's divine Envelope, as it were. God's divine envelopment. Hallelujah. And I love that. I like what it says in Isaiah 53, 11 about the Christ. It says that he shall see, talking about God the Father, shall see the travail of his son's soul and shall be satisfied. Jesus satisfied every demand that holiness and God's moral standard represents. Jesus satisfied every demand. He dotted every I and he crossed every T. He, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Many shall many uh, righteous servants 
excuse me, shall my righteous servant justify many? Shall my righteous servant justify many? In other words, the justify is just, just as if I've never sinned. So shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. Bear their iniquity. Iniquity comes about when we know the truth, we receive the truth, but then we reject the truth. Iniquity is point blank, absolute renunciation of what God has already done and we know about. And we were walking in. That, that's just like Lucifer. Lucifer, same way. He was a cherub covering of God. He was the uh, worship leader in heaven. And uh, he was God's covering angel, protecting angel, protecting the glory. And then he decided one day he wanted to walk away. Ha, my goodness. But I like what it says in 1 John 3, 5, but ye know that Christ appeared to take away sins. The reason why Jesus was made manifest, that he might what destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 5, but ye shall know that Christ appeared to take away sins. And in him, look at this, and in him there is no sin. In him there is no sin. Amen. And he has made us to sit in Christ. We are seated with him in heavenly places, in all his heavenly graces, in all his heavenly stature. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I love it. I love it. I mean, you got to love it too. It's just, how can it get any better than that? Thank you, Jesus. And we're raised with him, where we raised but through faith, the operation of God. But he's been placed far above all, Prince of Ephesians uh, 121, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which, which, which is to come. He covers it all. Calvary covers it all. Yeah. And Cal Calvary is above it all. Woo. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he's made us to sit in the above places and not below Hallelujah. But how did he do that? Well, Romans 8, 3, for what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering for sin. He thus condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. He put sin in the flesh under judgment. So all of our sinful nature is put in judgment by the Son of God because he is perfect. He's always been perfect. He's always been without sin, without spot, without wrinkle, or any such thing. He is God's perfect remedy for a world that is imperfect completely to its core. My God, hallelujah. He thus condemned sin in the flesh, he put judgment on sin in the flesh. Yes. Yes. But what does that mean? Well, he went the extra mile for you and for me because it says in Romans 4.25, he was delivered over to death for our trespass. Yes. He, 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 he condemned sin in the flesh. He judged it. Then he went to the cross and he paid the price for its rebellion and for its life and for its existence, he went to the cross. He was delivered over to death for our trespasses and was raised to life for our justification. Isn't that wonderful? He was raised to life for our justification, putting an end to the, to the law of sin, putting an end to the body of sin, putting an end to the notions of sin in our body. He was raised from the dead and now... He has been raised for our justification as though we have never sinned. That is how he has been raised. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that a golden, sparkling, wonderful thing? Knowing that he judged sin in the flesh and he went and paid the price for sin. And he removed the sin quotient. The body of sin, the law of sin, the sin nature has been aborted inside of ourselves through the Son of God. Hallelujah. 
As a matter of fact, in Romans 3.25, God presented him as an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood, through faith in his blood, presented him as an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood in order to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he passed over the sins committed beforehand. How, his, and now all we have to do is have faith in his blood. Have faith in the fact that he went to the cross. Have faith in the fact that he went to the cross for us. Have faith in the fact that he died for our sins and was raised for our justification. We just have to have faith and know that he did it. Hallelujah. Glory. Give the Lord a praise. Of. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And now we can live sin free. And Romans 1.17, for the gospel reveals the righteousness of God that comes by faith from start to finish. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Faith in what? Faith in what Jesus has done. Faith in what Jesus is doing. Faith in what Jesus' life means. Faith in the fact that Jesus has been raised for our justification. We are justified before God as though we have never sinned. When we come to God, we come to God in and through Christ, by faith, through his grace. Hallelujah. And we come before God and we have moral standing and righteous standing before him. And we have an open heaven over our heads. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Look, it just told you. It just gave an explanation of what we have to do. Just simply have faith. Yeah. Look what it says here. I'll read it again. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by works of the law, nor by the works, uh, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2.16, for by the works of the flesh, no, uh, no one shall be justified. No flesh shall be justified. It's not about works. It's, it's, you know, we can never live up to the law. The law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. The law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. In other words, to show us our imperfection, to show us that we don't measure up to God's standard. We don't measure up to God's, uh, uh, his presence. We don't, we don't measure up to his pristine, clear, uh, totally holy presence. But it's Christ. Amen. That is there to intercept all of our default. It's Christ there to intercept all of our flesh. Christ there to intercept all of our wrongdoing. Christ there to intercept all of the things that have been going wrong and could go wrong because we live in and with the thought of sin. Right. Hallelujah. But in Christ, by faith, we are blessed forever in Christ. I like Galatians 3. Verse 7 and 9, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the same as the children of Abraham, as the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify. Look at this. Foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Did you know that God preached the gospel to Abraham? In Galatians 3, 7 and 9, it tells us that. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith or exercise faith or have faith are the same as the children of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee all the nations shall be blessed, and then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. They that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. They that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. By faith, we've been justified. We've been reinstated. We've been put in a position of receiving the blessing and not walking under the curse any longer. Because it says in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Wow. Hallelujah. 
devoid of the Spirit, lacking of the Spirit of God, lacking uh, from His divine nature, God qualified us to receive the presence of His Holy Spirit. The presence of His Holy Spirit. And all the promises that come out of the Holy Spirit are ours for the taking now. All 8,000 or more promises in the Bible because the Bible was outbreathed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And holy men of God spake as they were moved by God. Amen. And Jesus himself, John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. Made promises, God, the Father's made promises, God, the Son made promises. Now the Holy Ghost comes inside of us to live in us, to help us to live in God's promises. And in God's fulfillment of those promises, the Holy Spirit comes to direct us and guide us and lead us into the blessing of Abraham to live a heavenly and pure and God life in this earth for all that it's worth. And there is no dirt, but God giving birth to everything good by the Holy ghost can you say amen <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus second corinthians 5 21 i've now become the righteousness of god in christ let me read that scripture for you you know what i'm gonna come i just put that down um i just put that down on facebook as a statement but let me pull up the whole thing because that whole that whole uh, it's just it's so encompassing and uh, and we just thank god for it uh, you know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the New, Inter New International Version, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. Do you realize that we offer to God by faith the perfect sacrifice? Not the blood of bulls and goats. Not the blood of animals. But we, through faith, offer to God a perfect sacrifice without any spot or blemish any imperfection we were at, we're, we were uh, blessed to offer Christ as a sacri an atoning sacrifice like I read before we by faith have offered that to God God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God the righteousness of God that we might become the righteousness of God. That's how, that's how Hallelujah. And then Isaiah 53, 12, Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great. He will divide the spoils with the strong. Hallelujah. Our portion is that kind of portion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And thank God for it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Love Don't you love that? I mean, it's right there. It's, it's complete. It's the most complete thing ever been worked on earth by anyone. It is the most wise thing ever been done on earth. Hallelujah. I like, I like what it says in Leviticus 26, 13. I am the Lord your God who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the, the land of Egypt that you should not be their bondmen or slaves. I've broken the bands of your yoke and have made you to go upright. We are now the righteousness of God. We've been made upright. We are no longer slaves to the world. We're no longer slaves to the system. We're no longer slaves to our sinful flesh. We're no longer slaves to sin. Right. You know, because it says in Matthew 12, 25, a kingdom that is divided against itself is, is, is being brought to desolation and laid to waste. Right. Kingdom divided against itself is being brought to desolation and laid to waste. I thank God now we're in the kingdom of God and it has no division in it at all. We're not working out of our kingdom. We're not working out of our uh, all the world kingdom and then working out of the kingdom of God. We're working out of the kingdom of God alone. We're in the world, but not of the world. Can you, we're, we're citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, and, and you know what's happening now? Well, Isaiah 60, verse 14, the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bending low to you, and all who despised you shall bow down to your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord and Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 60, verse 14. Thank you, Jesus. And now he says that Isaiah 42, 16, I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. Amen. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will lead the blind in a way they do not know. Isaiah 42, 16 and 17. In paths that they, that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn their darkness into light, rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I will not forsake them. Wow. Whew, you know, I'm telling you, once this whole thing got set up, it's just it's glory from now on. Once you get saved, the next thing is glory. Salvation to glory. That's all it is. And, and God writing his story out of his glory. I mean, that's, all, that's what it's all about. You know, I like what it says. Well, we could move on. I got so many scriptures. We'll just move on here. Um, you know, I like what it says in Genesis 24. One, since we are sons of Abraham, daughters of Abraham. In Genesis 24, one, Abraham was now very old and the Lord blessed him in every way. Deuteronomy 28 and 8 says, The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouse, in all thy settest thine hand to do, shall bless thee in the land which the Lord your God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee as a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Oh. Praise oh. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, in Proverbs 4.22, they that find life, uh, uh, for they are life unto those that find them in health to all their flesh. God's talking about his word here. Exactly and now, you know, since we've humbled ourselves, that we've become born again, we've become washed in the blood, we've accepted Jesus as our, as our, as our Lord in Christ. He is the Son of, uh, of God, and, and he is now our righteousness. We've humbled ourselves. Proverbs 22, 4 says, Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches, honor, and life. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, life. Three things that you can count on now that you're born again. Riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and life. Proverbs 22, 4. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? You know, Romans 8, 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? He who delivered and spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How will he not also with him freely give us all things? Freely give us all things. Hallelujah. We've been adopted. We've been adopted back into Christ, back into God. Hallelujah. Now everything is available for us that was not available before. We can receive everything that heaven has. We can receive everything that the kingdom of God represents. We just have to be able to ask to receive. Romans 8.15, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves. So that you live in fear again, rather the spirit you have received brought about by your adoption to sonship is the one that calls you to cry out, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. The creator is your father. I said the creator now is your father. What does that mean? It means that he offered the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Perfect without blemish, without spot, without any hang-ups, once and for all and for eternity that, that sacrifice has been executed. Now all we have to do is have faith in its causability and, 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 and plausibility. Second Samuel twenty two thirty one. as for God, his way is perfect. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. Hallelujah. Now you can expect everything to work out perfectly. Because his way is flawless. His word is flawless. His word is without error. His word is without any, uh, 
It's without any confinements or containments. It's, a, it's, it's without any restriction. It's without any uh, negative jargon in it. His word works things out seamlessly and perfectly in your life. Because we have been saved by his engrafted word. Can you say amen? His indestructible word is part of our lives now. Hallelujah. You know, and I, I just commend you. And I'm, I, I got to get off for a minute, but I just commend you to have faith in trust in what I just talked about. Faith in his blood, faith in the cross, faith in the fact that Jesus went and died for the judgment of the sinful flesh. And he went to the cross and made atonement for us. You know, uh, but in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, Hebrews 4.21, but the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those that heard it. Faith unlocks the hidden everything in the word of God now. Yeah. Look what it says in, in Romans 11.17, for if some of the branches were broken off and you, a wild olive, were grafted in. We, everybody say, we've been grafted in. You are being a wild olive were grafted in among them and became partakers with them of the rich root of the olive tree. We are partakers of the rich root of the olive tree now. We have been transplanted. Can you say amen? We have been transplanted. Psalm 80 verse 9. You cleared the ground for it and it took root and filled the land. Psalm 80 verse, uh, uh, verse 8. You transplanted a vine from Egypt and drove out the nations from before it and planted it in Canaan. Look what God has done. God has planted us in the richest soil. He has engrafted us and put us in uh, the vine, the, the, the main olive rich root of the vine, of the divine. All the promises and all the covenants and everything that you've read from Genesis to Revelation are in the root yes. of the vine. Yes. Jesus is the main vine. Can you say amen? We are the branches. Hallelujah. Now we fellowship with him forever and ever. In, not in futility, but in the eternity of things. Now we live in his glory. Now we live in his power. Now we live in his presence. Now we live in his goodness. Now we live in his endowments. Now we live in the life that he celebrates in heaven. We are living in that life now and we're living at large. Hallelujah. Because he's in charge. Can you say amen? He's the yes and amen. God's not saying no to us anymore. Can you say amen? Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, a couple more verses let you go. Psalm 100, verse 5. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. Yeah. Isaiah 29, 5. But your, uh, but your many foes will be like the fine dust, the multitude of the ruthless, like blowing chaff. Then suddenly in an instant they shall be cut off. Suddenly in an instant they shall be cut off. Hallelujah. Uh, Exodus 15, 18, the Lord will reign forever and ever. When's it gonna when's it gonna end? It never ends. The life we're now living in God will never end. Psalm 93, 3, thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Psalm 102, 12, but you, O Lord, sit in throne forever. Your renown endures throughout all generations. That includes this generation. Psalm 146.10, the Lord reigns forever. O God, O Zion, for all generations shall say hallelujah to you. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 146.10 and Amos 9.15, I think I'll... Uh, I will, firm, uh, it, I will firmly plant them on their own land. Never again will they be uprooted from the land I give them, says the Lord their God. Never, everybody say, never again will we be uprooted. Thank you, Lord. Never again 
We have been rooted with Christ. We're restored with Christ, rooted with Christ, reclaimed with Christ, reconciled with Christ, redeemed with Christ, refreshed with Christ. Hallelujah! Praise God! Everything's brand new in Christ. Can you say amen? Everything is brand new with what we have to do. Glory to God. And we loft and praise him. We loft and worship him. Amen. We glorify him not only with our praise of our mouth, but with our, with our sowing, with our seeds, with, with, with our giving, because we honor him, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Because he's got the purse strings and he's got the life strings of everything that we participate in life now. Can you say amen? Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so we got it. It's done in the sun. And we've only just begun. And we have won in every way in Jesus' name. All right. That's enough for now, I think. I'm going to go ahead and jump off at this point. It's Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center. Uh, if you want to sow into this ministry, you can simply go to Dallas Revival Center. There's a link for PayPal me. You can click on that hyperlink. You can sow there. Also, a download Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, on your smartphone, and it will give you a protocol to be able to send seed here. Uh, you can also, because we're going to reach the gospel. We're reaching the globe with the gospel. We're going to reach the world with this kind of gospel. They need to hear this. The reason why so many people haven't, haven't changed their mind, they haven't heard what, what, what God has done for them and, and how easy it is to accept the perfect gift and receive everything they could possibly have ever dreamed of. It's right there in front of them. So uh, do that. And, and, and on the Zelle, if you download the Zelle app, put in 469-335-3356, 469-335-3356. And then um, if you want to go to Facebook, in Facebook, in the inbox, you can click on the dollar sign. We're set up to receive that way, too. All right, God bless you as our prayer, Steve Sterling. I click the like button, click the share button, and we really care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now. But God bless. God's best.